everyone and welcome to today's demonstration. This is going to show the knit sweater effect using some 3D gel and uh, adding a few little embellishments there. Now for the base color I did use Joe Hen's Color It Gel Polish number 29, beautiful rose color, and the Realistic Gel from Joe Hen's number 27 is a perfect uh, complementary color. For the sugar part of the nail, I did use Cool Diamond, the uh, Silk Microfine Glitter. And for the embellishments, I used the Joe Hens Rose Gold 1.2 millimeter metal balls and also these cute little metal rose charms that I got in this little pot. I think that I got those from AliExpress, but I'll provide one from um, Amazon that'll probably be quicker shipping. Now I did notice that when I was cleansing, trying to get some glitter off of this, it started to turn, turn a little chalky. So to prevent that, I just took some Ugly Duckling Matte Gel Polish and my Stiff Bristle Concealer Brush here and did a very, very thin layer over the gel and that will help prevent it from getting chalky and also from it getting shiny. The key to this technique is using just plain old tap water. Now normally when you work with 3D gel, you work with cleansers or alcohol, but you don't want to do that in this case. I will be using this little needle tool. It came in a kit, uh, which I'll provide a link to. And also uh, I'll be using a spatula to cut ends off of the ropes and also to get some of that gel out of the the uh, pot. Now if you don't have uh, Joe Hens or don't want to use it, you can uh, use other gels. I would suggest using a firmer gel like this E&A uh, &A gel from AliExpress. You can see it's got a similar, it holds up really nicely. It It's not too soft. I did find that some gels were a little bit too soft for this technique. This Afer or Ifer uh, is also from AliExpress. The only reason why I didn't use it, it is firm enough. However, when it starts to settle, it turns shiny and you don't really want that kind of effect with a sweater. So that's why I didn't use that. And the same goes for the lace gel from Crystal Nails. I'm just showing you uh, some different 3D gels that I have and why I didn't use them as opposed to the Joe Hens. This is a very nice uh, 3D gel, but it is a little bit too soft for this particular technique. When I tried it with that at first, it just sorted to kind of melt together and it ruined uh, the effect. So we're gonna start with our sample here. I'm gonna paint one coat of the number 29 color on the nail. It really is a gorgeous um, mauve rose color and uh, terrific coverage on the nail as well. So I'm gonna cure this and I'm gonna remove the sticky layer. And the reason for that is I'm going to do the top uh, part of the nail only and I don't want any of that glitter sticking to the tacky layer on the bottom part of the, of the nail. So we're gonna come in with our second coat and I'm just going to go a little bit more than halfway down and get it relatively even across. And then I'll come in with my micro fine glitter and just dust that into the wet gel. Once you get it coated the way that you like it, go ahead and cure that in your lamp. And I'm just gonna brush off any excess. All right, now we're ready to make our ropes. And so I'm gonna take a little bit of, you don't need a lot to start with. You don't wanna make a super thick rope because because keep in mind it's going to be halved and then twisted together so the 
the skinnier you make your rope, the less bulky the nail is going to look. So I like to, with this gel, I like to take it out of the pot, kind of roll it around a little bit, get some body heat onto it so it's not quite so firm. And then I'm going to take my tap water. And again, it's just nothing special about it, just right out of the faucet. My mat is a silicone. It's a translucent silicone mat. And um, so I'm placing a little bit of water down there. And I've got some water still on my finger. And that little flake of something down there, you don't want that because it will show in that gel. So you want to make sure your surface is lint free, glitter free. Uh, you don't want any of that to get into your into your gel. So we're simply going to roll out this like a little snake of gel. You want it even all the way across and I'm going to lift it up from the center. And then I'm simply going to take it and twist it into a rope. Don't start too far up near the top of that. You want to start about middle and then roll it. And then you get this beautiful rope look. And we're going to take it off of our tool. I've already done up some for the sake of time. I've done up some here on my palette. I'm going to cut off the loop at the top with my spatula. The same with that pointed tail. Don't throw those little pieces away. You can put those right back into uh, your pot of gel. And now we're ready to apply our ropes to the nail. Now on this side, I, I twisted clockwise and on these I twisted counterclockwise and that's the key to getting the knitted effect. You want the ropes to, that are next to each other to be turned in the opposite direction. I hope that makes sense. So normally, again, when working with 3D gel, you would use, you know, alcohol or uh, a cleanser. But in this case, I don't want to um, have my ropes become misshapen in any way. So I just thought it would be better to apply a super thin layer, just enough for the ropes to sit into it. If you do a really thick layer, that top coat's going to kind of squish up between your ropes and it's going to make it appear shiny and you don't want that. That's why you want just a very thin layer of the top coat. We're going to pick up one of our ropes. You want to be very delicate handling this because it can become misshapen very easily. Just ever so slightly make sure that it's in full contact all the way down and then we're just going to cut off any excess on the edge. So Again, when you're laying these down, you're going to go for the opposite twist on each side of the other to make sure that it has that knitted look. I do like to lay my, my first piece in the center and then work both sides from there. I'm not curing in between because I don't want to cure that layer of top gel that I put down. So I'm just trying to be very careful that I don't bump any of this and, and cause it to uh, misshapen. So once you get everything laid down, now it's time to cure it. It cures very fast in the lamp. I did this in 30 seconds. Um, I believe it's either 30 or 60 for Joe Hens. I'm, I can't remember what Henrietta said, but um, once that's completely cured, it's on there to stay. So I added some of my first gel, jam gel, to apply my embellishments into. We're going to apply those 1.2 millimeter balls there. It's a perfect height with the um, gel. 
little bit more in the center for our rose charm. And now we're ready to cure that. All right, now, like I said at the beginning, if you want to avoid any chalkiness from normal wear and tear, you know, normal wear, I would go ahead and um, apply some matte top coat. I'm using the stiff bristle brush because I want to get it um, into the all the areas, but I also don't want it to saturate the area and level out those areas. I, I want to keep the texture. And it's a very nice, smooth texture. It's not a rough texture at all. And I did the ropes on these a little bit smaller than I did on my original sample, so it's not quite as bulky. So for those who don't like too, too much of a raised effect on their nails, this might be a perfect height for them. So again, I'm just coming through, taking the barest amount on my brush and just swiping it over all of that gel right there. Once I get a good coat on there and I see that I haven't flooded any areas with it, I'm going to go ahead and cure that. Now the Ugly Duckling top coat does have a sticky layer so it needs to be removed and you are left with a beautiful matte finish for your knit look. So there is our completed nail. Again, you can see it really is easy to do. It just takes time to make the, the ropes and to assemble it, but once it's done, it's a very cool look, I think. No pun intended. So, Again, here is the, the sample, original sample on the right that I did. You can see it is slightly bulkier than the one on the left that I did here in the video. So whatever your preference is, you can certainly adjust it with the thickness of the ropes that you make. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. If you have any comments or questions for me, go ahead and leave them down below. I will get to them as soon as I can. As always, I will leave links to all of the uh, products that I used. If you liked the video, I would appreciate it if you like and subscribe. And until next time, I will see you guys later.